What's up, Bills Mafia? Today, we're going to explore the Buffalo Bills' biggest offseason needs. But before we get to that, let's get to that intro. This is PZ. Welcome to the Mafia Sports Report. I am Tommy. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because I always forget to tell you. Well, Bills Mafia, here we are. Another offseason for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, my, oh, my. Does Brandon Bean have his plate full this offseason? Lots to do um, with very little cap space to work with. Um, so, can he free up cap space? Of course he can. He does it time and time, uh, uh, you know, again, year after year. We've been in this situation before. This is nothing new. Um, you know, we're obviously, as everyone knows, we're 45 in the red. Um, you know, we're one of, <laughs> one of the worst teams right now as far as uh, cap space goes. Uh, I believe New Orleans uh, tops everybody at 85 in the red. And I believe Miami's at 50. So, uh, yeah, not good, but um, we definitely could clear up some cap space. But I will say, man, um, I know we said it in the years past that it won't be a big offseason as far as free agent signings go. Uh, and he's went ahead and signed some big free agents like Von Miller uh, and got deals done like Ed Oliver uh, and Matt Milano. But this year, he may be telling the truth. Um, there's just, I just have a weird feeling that this year is going to be a lot like last season where you will see a lot of one year deals get done. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll wind up loading back up, getting bigger contracts uh, or, or signing bigger free agents the following season when our cap space uh, is better. But right now, I, I just think that what they're, gonna, what they're going to do is work through the draft. And that's probably why he stockpiled the draft last year with draft picks. That's why he traded down uh, so often in that draft to get as many picks as he can for this year's uh, upcoming draft. So 10 draft picks, will he use some of them uh, to trade up? I assume he will. Um but we'll see. But anyways, um, let's go ahead and get this thing going. Uh, once again, shout out to Bill's Wire for creating this article. So what are the Bill's biggest offseason needs in 2024? Look at Brandy Bean right there with the shades on, rocking them like me. But he's big baller Bean. Uh, I'm not big baller Tommy. I'm just uh, a guy living check to check. But that's all right. That's all right. He's still my buddy. All right, let's get Let's get to this. All right, salary cap situation. Hey, I was just talking about that. Look at him. He's like, fuck, man. Right? Son of a bitch. I'm in trouble here. What do I got to do to get this cap down? Well, do I need to cut Trey White? Oh, damn it. I like Trey White, but I may have to. All right, let's see what it says. <laughs> the bill salary cap situation needs restructuring for another consecutive year. Uh. Uh, I'm sorry, re restructuring for another consecutive year. This time around, the hits coming on some of the team's top players' contracts are some of the biggest he's had to manage. The Bills are currently slated to be 50.6 over the projected 2024 salary cap limit per over the cap. Now, I've seen 45, so we'll just say we'll stick with the 45. They say 50. I, I, th I think it's more like 45 or 48, but whatever. Same thing. Either way, we're in the red. Prior to making moves when the new league year, uh, free agency and trading period uh, kick off on March 13, Bean and company will look at ways to get down from the above the cap. Uh, Bean has been more hit than miss in terms of deals, and while they have certainly been a few larger contracts he may wish that he had could 
could get back and where I've done differently, some things he's been masterful uh, are both bringing in talent on both sides of the ball on short-term packs and one-year deals like last year, as well as working out creative solutions with contracts and payroll. Players like offensive lineman Deion Dawkins, cornerback Teron Johnson, uh, cornerback Rasul Douglas could be extension candidates. Meanwhile, players like uh, p- players from quarterback Josh Allen to cornerback Trey White, tight end Dawson Knox, linebacker Matt Milano, left guard Connor McGovern also could be potential uh, restructure parts of their deals to free up spending. The GM's recent remarks about the need to hit on the team's uh, picks in April NFL draft highlight the importance of getting more cost control talent as well. Doing so will be critical for the years preceding the draft as well. Creating cap space will give the Bills a chance to improve position areas of need, retain and add talent, and have enough payroll to sign their draft picks. Um, right. And you, <laughs> exactly. You also got to sign the picks, right? <laughs> you, you know, you, you could draft all you want, you can get 20 guys in here. Doesn't mean you'll be able to afford them. One and two, uh, there's only so much, uh, you know, so many players you can have on a roster. So, um, yeah, that's why I always said, man, stockpiling draft picks. You could, you know, unless you're going to use them as a trade, uh, it's kind of pointless to get so many players uh, when you know a lot of them aren't going to make the roster, and you only have so much room. So that's one, but. I agree with that in in a, in a sense because you got to work through the draft as far as contract situation goes, right? You get yourself a stud receiver in the first round, and that's where I'm going this year if I'm the Buffalo Bills. Um, you lock him in at five, you know, you have him on a five year rookie deal. You save yourself a lot of money. That's if you hit on the pick. Once again, it's the draft. Draft's funky, right? You never know who's going to be, uh, you know. Uh, a good NFL player or not uh, there. You, you guys know this. There's been top five picks that are out of the league in two, three years. Okay. Um, we know this from the 2018 draft, right? With Josh Allen. So look, look at the draft draft class there. You know, Josh Rosen out of the league, right? Uh, Sam Darnold. He's a journeyman. Uh, Baker Mayfield was a first pick in the draft. And, you know, I, I would say he's not been a first round type of player. Um, so there's been a lot of, a lot of misses early on. So you're not always guaranteed just because you draft in the first round and you get a, you get yourself a player there that it works out. But I still think that's the way to go. Um, now in the free, now free agency, um, I like what he did last year and some of the one year deals. The problem with that is when these guys overachieve or, you know, live up to their, you know, potential, like a Leonard Floyd, who I thought was going to get over nine sacks because that's just what he's been doing over the course of his career. And the last, especially the last three years, he's been averaging about nine and a half sacks. I believe he got 10 this year for the Buffalo Bills. So uh, problem is because we only gave him a one-year deal. Listen, edge rushers are, they get paid. And he already said it. Like, look, I, I would like to be back in Buffalo, but at the same time, I want to explore my options. Meaning he wants to get paid and I don't blame him. He's, you got to remember where his, you know, how old he is right now, how how many seasons he's been in the league. This is his last probably uh, time he's going to get a contract, like a good contract. So he's probably going to go out and get paid, and we're not going to be the ones to pay him. We just don't have that kind of bread. And I don't think Brandon Bean feels comfortable enough uh, paying him that kind of money, considering his age and considering the Von Miller deal. And unfortunately for that deal, because of the injury, it's 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 winding up. It may be a bad deal. Now we'll see. We'll see how 2024 is because I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not yet ready to say it's a bad deal unless 2024 um, is a bad year for Von Miller. If it's a bad year for Von Miller, then yeah, that was a terrible deal, and that's that's something that you know Brandon Bean will be more cautious of moving forward, especially with aging players uh, on those kind of deals. So. Um, you know, that, that's what I got to say on that. Now, Trey White, I said it before, man. I just, two back-to-back seasons, season-ending injuries is, is um, it's just not good, guys. It That's, that's uh, I feel for the guy, but let's be real here when it comes to Trey White. Um, even when he returned last year, and he was a lot 
better than he, what he was the year prior when he came back late in the season. Um, he still had lost a step, in my opinion, this year. He was good, but he was not near what what we what we were what we saw from the past from Trey White. Right? He wasn't the same old Trey. He was good. He was better than Dane Jackson. Right? He was better than Benford. But I don't know if you could say that now. Like, I think Benford has gotten better and better as the season's gone on for him. Um, and I just feel like right now, Benford being under his contract year still, Trey, I don't think is better than Benford right now. I just don't, guys. And coming back from, like I said, from an ACL and an Achilles, that's brutal. That is brutal, guys. And I just think right now, if you have Rasul Douglas, Rasul Douglas, you give him the extension. You save a little money that way by extending him for a little bit longer on the contract. Uh, he's your number one. Benford's your number two. And Trey has to go. Now, if they want to keep Trey and Trey's willing to redo his contract, then I would still be up for having Trey White on this team if he's willing to redo his contract uh, for the Buffalo Bills. If he's not, I think that's one guy that you, you have to let go to save some money. Naeem Hines is another guy I think they should release, save some money that way. Uh, Deontay Hardy, he was he was just a bad signing last year, two year deal. Um, you can also sign, you can also save some money that way as well. And then obviously restructuring uh, Josh Allen's contract saves you about twenty two million. So there's a ways around it. Deion Dawkins, um, they definitely could free up cap space that way. There's 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 quite a bit of things they could do um to free up that space but um you know unfortunately like for digs right everybody's talking about digs and digs saying he's not you know he's uncertain about you know he doesn't really know about what's going to happen in 2024 if he's going to be about buffalo bill he's going to be a buffalo bill okay like there's no way out of that contract he knows it brandon bean knows it uh the only way that's at, they can get out of that contract if he's willing to negotiate um, on the guaranteed, and he's not. No, play. let me tell you something. He would have to truly hate, hate the Buffalo Bills and Sean McDermott, and just not want to be in Buffalo to to uh, redo that guarantee to be traded somewhere else. It's not going to happen. No player. Let me, let me tell you, thirty million is a lot of money, guys. It's not going to do it. So, um, that being said, he's going to be a Buffalo Bill, and I listen. I still think Stefan Dix is a great receiver. I do. Do I think he's a top five now? No, I, I don't. I used to think he was a top five, and he was. He ac absolutely was. I still think he's a very good receiver. Top 10? Sure. I think I think he's he's right there on the top 10. Uh, but right now, you know, uh, I, I just don't see him as a top five receiver in the NFL. There's too many re really, really good dynamic receivers in the NFL. Um, but that being said, uh, this offseason, we also need to address uh, the offense. The offense for me, guys, is the key for the for the Buffalo Bills this offseason. The time is now. Like, like you got to stop messing around and always shopping around for defense. Defense has let us down year after year after year. We spent money year after year after year on defense. Name one season that you can remember the Buffalo Bills concentrating uh, on the offense. It really hasn't happened. Name a draft besides the 2018 draft that the Buffalo Bills actually uh, drafted a first-round uh, you know, offensive weapon. Now, I know they got Osiris Torrance last year and on the offensive side, but he's an alignment. I'm talking about I'm talking about a receiver, a running back, somebody, a dynamic weapon for this offense. It has not been done since Josh Allen in 2018. That to me is a problem. We're going into 2024. Look at the uh, look at the free agents that we signed since Brandon Bean and, and Sean McDermott have taken over the Buffalo Bills. What free agent do you remember that was a key free agent signing on the offensive side of the ball that moved the needle? I I don't recall any. Zero. Zilch. We've gone, we've gotten offensive players, but they have not worked out. Last year, for instance, Trent Sherfield, which I thought would have, did not. Deontay Hardy, another guy I thought probably would work out, help, you know, help the offense a little bit. He has speed. 
He had some good numbers in, in, with New Orleans when he was healthy. He did nothing, absolutely nothing for this offense. Waste of a signing, waste of money. Um, but once again, those were guys that were, you know, we don't know. Maybe they could be good. Maybe, you know, it was a, it was never a, a for sure thing that these guys were going to produce. So my point is, man, Brandon Bean has to go all in on the offense. It's time. It's, it's, it, I, I, listen, that's the, that's the downfall of having a defensive minded head coach. He wants to lean more on the defense and it has got his, it hasn't gotten us nowhere. It has gotten this team nowhere. In fact, it's let us down. And if you look at this season now, our defense is depleted. We have nobody. We've, we have one defensive tackle signed. Uh, under contract for the Buffalo Bills, which is Ed Oliver. Von Miller, we don't know what we're getting out of him. Gregor Rousseau, which I thought would take a bigger step last year, he took a step, a baby step. I, I kind of was disappointed in Rousseau's uh, development last year. I, I just didn't think he took a big enough step. Now, did he play bad? No, I'm not saying he played bad. But I, I expected more from Gregor Rousseau, and he just didn't. he didn't provide that. Um, so we'll see what happens with him at Oliver beast. Absolutely. Um, he lived up to his contract, his uh, contract extension. Um, Micah Hyde probably retiring. I mean, I know he is right. His wife wrote a letter to Bill's mafia. You write a letter saying, thank you for everything, blah, blah, blah. That's a sure sign that he's retiring. Jordan Phillips, I know he's a free agent, but he's already hinted towards retirement anyway, so he's probably gone. Shaq Lawson was a one-year deal. He's a free agent. We'll see if he if he resigns uh, to like another one-year deal. Um, you know, we got guys coming back from injuries like Matt Milano, Terrell Bernard had the had the ankle, which he should be fine, good to go. Um, you know, Dane Jackson is a free agent. I mean, we're probably not going to pick him back up. We'll probably need more depth at corner. We're going to need, like I said, a new safety. Jordan Poyer has one more year on his uh, on his deal. He'll probably return, but we need to figure it out. We need we need to sign some safeties in, in the draft, or, or draft some sign uh, draft some safeties, or sign some safeties in free agency. Taylor Rapp was a one year deal. He's going to be hitting the free agency market. We'll see if he returns. Like our right now, our defense is thin. We don't have a lot. So. With those 10 draft picks, if it was me, I'm going first round receiver and I am really dialing up on defense uh, because you need it. Now, I know you said, I said you work the offensive side of the ball. We need some stars, right? Well, you got your first round pick. That's that's one. You get yourself a stud receiver and number two, best receiver on the board. Trade up if you need to, like you did last year with Dalton Kincaid. Right, you you know Brandon Bean's willing to trade up if he likes a player. He did it last year. He did it for Josh Allen. Just saying, uh, he did it for Tremaine Edmonds. Free agency wise, for me, you go get Derrick Henry. I think you can get Derrick Henry on an eight to ten million dollar deal. Um, I think he still has a lot of juice in his tank. I think you can get. I think you can sign him for three years, two to three year contract, and I think he would be dynamic here. It's time to stop fucking around uh, if you're Brandon Bean. Like, you can't keep playing this game. Um, you have to get yourself a, a, a needle mover in free agency on the offensive side of the ball. You've done it on defense. The time is now. And I think Derrick Henry would be bring so much to this offense. You want to talk about a two-headed monster with him and Cook. There you go. That would be – listen. Teams would fear the Buffalo Bills offense going, you know, playing against them. When you got Josh Allen, Derrick Henry, James Cook, Stephon Diggs, and whoever we draft and in the draft as far as a receiver, whoever the next number two receiver will be uh, on this team, and Khalil Shakir and Dalton Kikade. That is an offense. That's an offense teams will fear. Defenses would not want to play. All right, let's get back to it. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, you know what, man? You better wrap it up. Right, I gotta wrap it up. I've I just been just talking and talking. All right, let's get to the next one. The Buffalo Bills, man, this is what <laughs> you give me. They get me going. All right, defense. Oh, Micah High. He's like, man, damn, bro. Been here since 2017. 
So many disappointments, you know, but love my time here. Love Bill's Mafia. You know, went to the playoffs almost every year as a Buffalo Bill. Like, there's nothing for him to hang his head, uh, you know, about, uh, you know, retiring. Uh, he did a lot of great things for the Buffalo Bills. Um, you know, he has a play that will go down a Buffalo Bills history, the, the interception uh, versus the Patriots in the playoffs. Um, that That's a play that will always, you know, Bills Mafia will always remember. Um, just a, just a, a good guy, did a lot for charity. I will miss Micah Hyde as a leader of this team, as, as a person. Uh, it just sucks that, you know, uh, he couldn't get a Super Bowl while he was here. You know, I feel bad for it. Like, it's like Kyle Williams, right? Like, he falls into, you know, some of the past players that I really feel bad for um, that gave everything they had while they were in Buffalo and, and, and didn't have anything really to show for it, right? Like, it sucks, man. Like, uh, you know, like I said, I, I mentioned a few players, you know, Kyle Williams. Um, I think I think I feel bad for Eric Molds, guys that, you know, stayed with this team year after year after year when they probably could have left, got a bigger deal elsewhere, um, but believed in the team for some reason. Now, I understand why Micah High believed in the team. But I get that part. Kyle Williams, we weren't going anywhere for the longest time uh, when he was here, but he just loved this city, and I, I respect that. Eric Moulds is another guy that nobody talks about. Um, I believe he – I truly believe he would have been a Hall of Fame player if he played with another team. Um, I do. You know, you're talking about a guy that played with, I think, seven quarterbacks, um, three different head coaches, three or four head coaches, I think two GMs, six or five or six offense coordinators. I mean, you cannot – I don't even know how he racked up almost 10,000 yards playing with the Buffalo Bills uh, with that many different receivers. I mean, I'm sorry, with that many different quarterbacks and, and coaches and offensive coordinators. Uh, it's crazy. So imagine if Eric Moulds played for a team that actually had their shit together and a quarterback that was their long, you know, franchise quarterback. Uh, who knows where he would have been as far as yards and, and if he would have won a Super Bowl. But like I said, man, there's plenty of other examples, um, you know, of guys that, that came through Buffalo. They gave their heart and soul. Fred Jackson, another guy, and just didn't come up, you know, came came short came, or, or got nothing. Uh, Micah Hyde, I would say, was the closest out of those guys I just mentioned, you know, getting to the AFC championship game. So, once again, nothing to hang your head down for, but, man, I feel bad for the guy. Uh, it's not the Bills offense that had a pattern of losing close games under head coach, head coach Sean McDermott. More often than not, offense has kept them in close games, giving them leads, sending games to overtime, and creating opportunities to win. The Bills' defense and special teams, however, have been a different story. And while both those other phases flash potential improvement in this area at times this past year, the team the, the time has come to give the Bills defense a fresh bolstering similar to the way Bean did with the offense last offseason. There's plenty of work, there's plenty to work out here. Uh defensive tackle Daquan Jones, linebacker Leonard Floyd, defensive end Jordan Phillips, defensive end Shaq Lawson, defensive edge and defensive edge AJ Epinesa. Defensive tackle, Tim Settle. Defensive tackle, Limo Joseph. Defensive tackle, Puna Ford. Safety, Micah High. Safety, Taylor Rapp. Cornerback, Dane Jackson, are among the Bills' unrestricted free agents. One area to keep an eye on during the early rounds of the NFL draft that Buffalo could add co cost control talent is a pass rusher. Man, look at that list of players. I mean, I have a feeling, I have a feeling that Daquan Jones will be back as a Buffalo Bill. I think Leonard Floyd is gone. I think Jordan Phillips is going to retire. I think Shaq Lawson's, he may be back on a one-year deal. A.J. Epinesa is going to get paid, guys. He's gone. Tim Settle's gone. Uh, Linval Joseph is a guy that just waits around midseason, you know, for a team to pick him up, so he won't be on the roster. Puna Ford probably hates, hates Sean McDermott for what he did uh, by making him inactive most of the season. He would not resign with Buffalo, and I'm sure he's going to have some things to say uh, sometime in the future about Sean McDermott. Uh, safety Micah Hyde, we all know he's retiring. Retiring Taylor Rapp, I could maybe see Taylor Rapp coming back on another one- to two-year deal, 
I liked how he played. Problem with Taylor Rapp is he plays so physical. Uh, he he does he's he gets injured a lot. Like he's on the injury report more than I like to see. But he's a hell of a player, and I wouldn't mind him back. Cornerback Dane, Dane Jackson. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, uh, you never know. He come back on another one year deal. Um, you know they seem to like him. He's like a Levi Wallace, right? But yeah, guys. I mean. A lot of work to do. You guys see right there, a lot of guys leaving the building on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and like I said, man, how I would do it is you uh, you work through the draft on the defensive side of the ball. Just like that article said, you get younger, you get yourself an edge, maybe the second round, third round, somewhere around there. Um, but but the draft is exactly how I would what I would do it. Like I said before. You go with you go with your receiver in the first round. You do what you got to do to get yourself a stud receiver. Lock him up for that five year con- rookie contract. Hope, hopefully, uh, you know he's a, he works out right. He's a draft pick that that uh, winds up working out, uh, and you got yourself a a, a a true number two, possible number one in the future. Uh, and then you just go you go you go ham on defense, right? You really go ham on defense in that draft. Uh, and and like I said. Uh, in, in the off se- in the free agency, for me, you get a running back. Uh, and if you don't get Derrick Henry, by the way, because he's the only one I would want, I'll be honest with you guys. If you don't get Derrick Henry in free agency, then my suggestion would be to draft a running back uh, in this draft that's a bigger back, like a Derrick Henry type of back who's a, you know over six foot, uh, like just a bigger back, basically, a change of pace back you know, you know, different from, from what we've been doing years past, which is drafting small running backs. It didn't make any sense. Drafted Devin Singletary, which I love, but then you draft Zach Moss very next year, same type of running back. The only difference is Devin Singletary is more elusive, but they're the same back. Why would you do that? Then you draft James Cook when you had Devin Singletary. Once again, there's no, we don't have a short yardage back. You don't have a goal line back. Both those guys aren't goal line type of backs. So the Bills never had a true, you know, at least under McDermott, a bigger back. Now they tried to do it with Murray this year, but unfortunately Murray showed his age down the stretch. It just wasn't, obviously wasn't Latavius Murray of his younger days, right? Like he showed his age. We tried to get, go ahead and get, we, we signed Leonard Fournette. You know, he was off the streets. He didn't have much training. He didn't have much, you know, he didn't do anything in the offseason, really. Like, he was just waiting around for a team to call him. So he was rusty, and he's also aging. So he didn't really show anything on the field, right? We need either, like I said, a Derrick Henry, or you go through the draft, and that's your other offensive uh, offensive player that you get through the draft if you don't get it through free agency. Um, And then, obviously, free agency, you're going to get a lot of one-year deals from me. Uh, you try to get back a guy like David Edwards, who they signed last year to a one-year deal. I think he would be perfect uh, to come back in a rotation, a depth guy. Um, I think you can get him back on a one- to two-year deal. Matter of fact, I would get him to a two-year deal because I thought he was excellent when he filled in last year for the few times that he had to fill in during a game. Um, you know, and, th- and then after that, you just start getting getting your, you know, Maybe some defensive players, one year deals. But you got 10 draft picks, guys. That's the way to go. So, anyways, let's uh let's go through this. Offense. All right. The Bills have hit on several key offensive positions using their early draft picks and packaging sets when necessary to move up to select players. Some of them have been such effective upgrades from their late later round peers that it's impossible not to notice a difference when these premium picks with these premium picks, man, I can't talk with these premium picks from last year's first rounder, tight end Dalton Kikade and second rounder offense alignment or Osiris Torrance, the 2022 second round, James cook Buffalo selected players who become key, uh, adding a premium cost control talent with elite skills, at the receiver position early in the April's draft could take the top off defenses, preventing double teams on Stefan Diggs and open up the passing game for quarterback Josh Allen and weapons like Kincaid, Cook, and Khalil Shakir. For several years, the question and need for a wide receiver threat have been highlighted this time of year, and the time has come to just do that. 
Uh, listen, I know I said earlier I made a mistake. Um, we did draft first round Dalton Kikeda. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, we traded up actually uh, two spots and gave up, I believe, our fourth round pick uh, to do so. Uh, I believe it was Jacksonville we traded up for. Um, and he will be, uh, uh, I think he will be a one of the better tight ends in the future. Right now, obviously, tight ends usually don't start off, you know, their first year dynamic, you know. Uh, so I thought he had a good year for the Buffalo Bills. Um, I don't I don't think we used him right in the first half of the season. I think when Joe Brady became OC, uh, you started to see Dalton Kikade's numbers go up. And obviously, when Dawson Knox was out, you really saw you got to see what Dalton Kikade could do as tight end number one. I believe he will be tight end number one moving forward. Uh, so yes, I am wrong on that one. So really, he was our our last first round. So it's really been Josh Allen and Dalton Kikade that they drafted in the first round offensive wise. Osiris Torrance was the second round pick. I don't know what I was thinking earlier, uh, but still they did concentrate. So I guess if you want to say last year they did go offense for the first two rounds. So yes, I guess I'll give uh, Bean credit for that. But it is still I still feel like they need a stud receiver um, this year's draft, and they do need to draft it in the first round, in my opinion. All right, next up. Free agency and NFL draft. Uh, from a free agency standpoint, Bean has been clear. The team will shop in the same tier as last offseason. The NFL draft could be more, way more impact. The NFL draft could be where, where more impact talent is added. Uh, packaging draft capital will move up and select players have become a frequent part of the Buffalo Bills NFL draft experience. Though it's been a while since we saw the GM make any big moves into the early rounds of the draft, that could change this April. And this early, and this early years, in his early years as GM with Buffalo, uh, Bean did some crafty maneuvering to position the team to select key players. With nine current picks this year, ten and possibly ten on the way via that could be a third round compensatory pick. I, I believe it will be, by the way, as well as a future draft capital to work with. Coupled with the cap situation and needs at receiver and on defense, we might see Big Baller Bean break out another asset management masterclass. In the past, the GM has stated that he doesn't see himself necessarily going all in as he needs to manage payroll to build 10 years out. Yet the Bills are in a window where they can add pieces to help compete for a championship. It might be time to push some chips into the center of the table, once more for key additions, and I think you have to. The time is a ticking. By the way, that's the end of that article. The time's ticking, man. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I don't think I don't think the windows. I don't think it's yet. I don't think it's close to being closed. But I also feel like we're in Josh Allen's prime years. I know we are, right? And as we continue to go on through these seasons and not make a Super Bowl. His prime is slipping away, and you have to eventually. Uh, I don't know about going all in and just you know, uh, you know, getting you know salary cap nightmare. But I think you need to start uh, really, you know, rolling the dice a little bit more, as they say. Um, Brandon Bean has been on the cautious side as far as the GM goes. Now, I would say that the Vaughn Miller. Signing was a bit surprising considering Brandon Bean has been on the more cautious side, especially in free agency. Uh, he's never really had a, un, you know, except for Von Miller, this big flash, flashy signing. Um, and, and hopefully the Von Miller signing doesn't, you know, defer him or, or get him cautious now. I feel like the, I feel like the Kelvin Benjamin deal, the trade kind of messed him up a little bit too uh, years ago. And he finally pulled the trigger and got Russell Douglas this last uh, see this past off this past season uh, at the trade deadline, and that worked out. Russell Douglas was uh, he was uh, a key to this defense. If we didn't get Russell Douglas, we would have been in a lot of trouble, guys. And uh, that worked out. And I and and you got yourself a number one now moving forward. Um, so once again, man, uh, I think it's time that Brandon Bean takes some chances uh, in free agency 
uh, especially uh, on on offense. I think I think like I said before, say it again. I think Derrick Henry um, is the guy he should be targeting if you want a needle mover. If you want somebody who can actually make an impact on this team off on the offensive side of the ball, and then I think uh, in the draft. Uh, you need to go all out. You need to roll the dice. You need to trade up. You need to do what you got to do to get the guy you want. And if you see a re- if you see a receiver who happens to slip down a little bit in that draft in the first round that you got, you know, that you see as a top ten talent, and he's sitting there, you know, he's he, he's around fifteen. Um, I you know, you got ten picks, and you got some players that you probably could part ways with to do a trade up. I wouldn't hate it. If it brings in a, a stud receiver, you got it. Uh, Gabe Davis, by the way, he, listen, he's gone. He's not going to be resigning here. Um, I, I, and honestly, I wouldn't want him back. I respect Gabe Davis, by the way. I think Gabe Davis is a good receiver. Um, but his it's, it's time in Buffalo is done. Um, you saw you saw the video of him and Bills Mafia. And by the way, those are idiot fans that were were heckling him at the game. Stupid. Don't do that. If you don't like a player, fine. There's no reason to talk shit to him on a sideline. Like that's 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 cl- it's, it's, it's just you know classless, right? Um, but anyways, I have I listen for a fourth round draft pick. I thought Gabe Davis performed very well for a fourth round draft pick. Um, and I think Bills Mafia expected more for some odd reason, like he was a first round talent, and we wasted this first, you know. Wasted a first round pick on Gabe Davis, uh, and that's just not the case. Um, man, fans weren't even as rough on Cody Ford as they were on Gabe Davis, a fourth round pick, right? Cody Ford was a second round pick who we traded up and passed on DK Metcalf. Explain that you weren't booing him, you weren't heckling him, he was terrible. I'm just saying, like, that that's classless. Don't do that. You don't like a guy, you don't like a guy. You're going to boo your own guy. You're going to heckle him at your own stadium. That's just, that's, that's so, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't be that guy. Don't be that, don't be that person. Uh, but anyways, guys, man, um, I will be back this Sunday doing a watch along for the Super Bowl. Why not, right? Even though it's, <laughs> it's brutal that the Buffalo Bills aren't in it. And I really felt like even with, um, the defense, how depleted it was with injuries. I still felt like we put up a bigger fight than, than Baltimore did against the chiefs. I felt like we should have beaten the chiefs. We won time of possession and turnover. Like, man, it just, you know, unfortunately it's the Buffalo bills and things just don't, don't go our way. And it sucks that we're not in the super bowl. Cause I truly believe if we beat the chiefs, uh, we would have beat Baltimore. I, I do believe that. And I believe we would have been in the Super Bowl, but uh, coulda, shoulda, woulda, and we're not here. So I still will be doing a watch along. Uh, so if you guys want to join me, that's cool. Um, and I may be on Friday for Friday Night Lights, but Mikey right now doesn't have power. He's, he's not had power for about five days uh, in California. I guess they they're having some bad wind storms over there or whatever. Uh, so we may or may not be on Friday. Um, just hit the notification bell. You'll know when we're on. Uh, But anyways, Bills Mafia, I love you a lot, man. And we're going to get this thing right. We're going to get this thing right. We have to. And and pray pray to the football gods that uh, um, (laughs) they give us the Super Bowl. By the way, real quick, too, I forgot to mention the Buffalo Bills did add Ronald Curry uh, as offensive. uh, um, I'm sorry, as uh, the quarterback coach. So uh, I believe he came from New Orleans. So uh, they said he's a, he's an upcoming uh, offensive coach. Um, he did get some coordinator, offensive coordinator, um, you know, meetings to, to 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 hire him potentially as office coordinator. That didn't, I guess, you know, didn't happen for him. But uh, he's a, that's I think that's a good person to have come to Buffalo for a year or two. Um, you know, and help out, help out the quarterback room. Um, you know, especially with Josh Allen, work with Josh Allen. So that's, that's good. Uh, that's good news for the Buffalo bills. 
And uh, yeah, that was my update. And oh, by the way, too, Ken Dorsey came out, talked a little bit about, not even a little bit, just basically said the coach fired him and, and uh, he's moved on. <laughs> so he didn't give a lot of input. Um, You know, he says he th- does think, you know, he does, moving forward, he thinks, you know, he, he does need to change some things up. So we'll see what he does in Cleveland. Also, our former uh, defense coordinator, uh, Leslie Frazier got hired, uh, as defensive coordinator for Seattle. So that's a good hire for them as well. I like I like Leslie Frazier a lot. I think he's a good guy uh, and a good defensive coordinator as well. So anyways, guys, that's the news. I kept rambling on there at the end. I appreciate you watching as always go bills. I'm out of here. Bills mafia. I love you. Peace out. And look at go. He could go all the way. Touchdown! 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 The Bills make me wanna Shout. kick your heels up and Shout. throw your hands up and Shout. throw your head back and Shout. come on now. The Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout! Yeah, yeah.